Hello. Hello, Sand. Good morning. Good morning, Sand. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the presence of the Most High God. How are we doing? How are we doing today? How are we doing? Can I get a feedback? Can I get a feedback? Welcome to the presence of the Most High God on Facebook and on YouTube. Hope you can see me. Hope you can hear me. Good morning, Cahill. Good morning. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Lord's presence. It's a beautiful thing to be in the presence of the Lord. It's an awesome, awesome privilege. Welcome in the presence of the Most High God. Yes. Okay. Okay, we're two or three. I gather together. The Lord is there. Our hearts are longing. Our hearts are longing. I can see Cargill. I can see Cahill. Welcome. Today is Sunday, 9th of July, 2023. And um, yeah, we want to start with prayer as usual. Can we go to Isaiah chapter 60, please? Isaiah chapter 60. We will read that and we will pray. I will read Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3. So I'm looking from Facebook to YouTube. I hope all is well on both ends. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit more. Okay. Isaiah 61 to 3. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold... The darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory, his glory, his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Okay. That sounds a bit low. Okay. Let's jump to verse 10 to 14. Isaiah 60, the same, 60, 10 to 14. He says, the sons of foreigners shall build your walls and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath, I struck you, but in my favor, I have had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. That men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you shall perish. And those nations shall be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the pine, the box tree together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Verse 14. 
also the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bound to you, and all those who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Okay, shall we jump to the next chapter? Isaiah 61, I'll read verse 5 and 6. Isaiah 61, 5 and 6. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servant of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, shall we pray? Shall we pray that we will continuously be the light of the world, that we will continuously be those people whom the world look to. We will be the light that will shine. And verse 3 of Isaiah 60 says, The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So we are the light on the hill, like Jesus says, you are the light of the world. So we cannot be hidden. We must rise, we must shine. Because our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen, is risen upon us. It's not our light that we are shining. It is the light of the Lord Jesus. His glory will be seen upon us. So that is our prayer for, for now. That the light of God will be seen on us. We will receive the light of revelation. We will reveal Jesus to the world. People will see Jesus through us in whatever we do. We will be the shining light. We will be the burning ones. We will be those ones that will draw Jesus into darkness so that in darkness, light will shine. The people out there are living in darkness. They think that they know, but they don't know. So let us pray. And say, Lord, make me. Make me who you want me to be. Make me your light. Make me your instrument. Make me your priest. Make me your king. Let me be your representative. Let me be that light that will shine so that the Gentiles will see that light and come to you, Jesus. We are only vessels representing Jesus. Kings will come to the brightness of our rising. So all levels of people have to see the light of God on us, in us, around us. And they should be drawn to that light. Shall we pray as we give thanks to God this morning in the name of Jesus, Sandalamashe. Marco Sarata Eskalama Santu Aziba Aziba Arigaruda Azakata Zakata 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 Asama Rekandiaribo Mamabo Azakata Chelela Kai Chelela Kai Chelela Kai Scientificum Esperamento Marco Asarata Eskalama Santu Eskalama Santu Eskalama Santu Ariga roda, ariga roda, ariga roda azakata. Chelela kai, chelela kai, chelela kai kandiaribo. Sandara mashe, sandara mashe. Zegede, zegede, zegede azakata. Sandana, 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 sandana. Ariga, ariga, ariga roda azakata. Chelela kai, chelela kai, chelela kai kandiaribo. Marco Asarata, Jesus, dawn on us. Lord Jesus, dawn on us. We have to see you. We need to know you. The world has to see you 
in us, on us, around us. Let your light shine. Let your living water flow through us. Let us be the, the, the living water that quenches the thirst of the world. When, the world, when people in the world are thirsty, let them look for us. When, they, are, when they, they, they feel they are in darkness, let them look for our light. Let us be those burning ones. Let us be the shining ones. Let us represent you on earth as it is in heaven. Let the world know that we are your people. Let the world know that we are your kings and your priests. Let the world know that we are the shining stars, the ones that came from heaven to earth to represent the kingdom of heaven. Father, we come and we declare that we will arise and we will shine for you. We will arise and we will be your light in the world. We will arise with your glory and the people of the world, as much as they are in darkness, when people are in darkness, all they want is light and we will be that light. Your glory will be that light on us. People will see your glory on us. People will see your power in us. People will see you around us. And they will be drawn to us because you say we are the light of the world. Here in Isaiah, Old Testament, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. In the New Testament, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. So it's not something that is going to happen. It's something that is happening now. This is who we are. This is who we must be. And so we declare that we are the light of the world and we will shine from the moment we wake up till the moment we sleep. Even in our sleep, we will shine because the devil will be too afraid of us even while we are sleeping. Why? Because the God has given his angels charge over us. Our surrounding is a surrounding of light. The places that we sleep in is full of light. The enemy cannot coexist with the Holy Spirit. The spirit of darkness and the spirit of light can never coexist. So if we carry the spirit of light, the enemy cannot find himself comfortable around us. So we declare that we are the light of the world. We will arise and we will shine. We will arise and we will shine. We will arise and we will shine because we are the priests of the Most High God. Isaiah 61 verse 6 says, But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. And you shall eat of the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall boast. God did not call us to worship him in vain. If we are kings and priests, if we are called the servants of the Most High God, then we will eat the riches of the Gentiles because that is our portion. We, we go on his majesty's uh, uh, mission and of course we are being taken care of because we are bringing hope to the lost. Marco Asarata, we are kings and we are priests going about our father's business. Therefore, we will eat of the abundance of the harvest. Jesus says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send harvesters. We have raised our hands. We said, Lord, here we are, send us. So we will eat of the fullness of the harvest. We will eat the riches of the Gentiles we will partake in the harvest because we are in daddy's business. We are going about father's business. So we will shine like our father. We will represent our father. And we say, Lord, open the doors. Open the doors. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us boldness to go on this journey. Give us the tenacity. Give us the, the zeal to go for you. Let us come back rejoicing like the disciples of Jesus who came back rejoicing. Even demons are subject to us. And Jesus is saying, that is a small thing. For demons to be subject to you is a small thing. Rejoice in the fact that your names are written in heaven. So Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you whenever your children are listening to this. 
We thank you that our names are written in heaven and that we came from heaven to earth to represent Jesus. The kingdom of God is among men and we are carriers of that kingdom. Jesus says the kingdom is within us. We are carriers of the kingdom of God. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for counting us worthy. Thank you that we ha we heard your voice and we and we had that ability to say yes to that voice. Thank you. It's not by might or power. You gave us the will to be willing. So Lord, right now we pray. Make us willing. Give us a willing spirit that will sustain us. Let us go on this journey to the end. Let us never be weak because your word says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not faint. Father, we, we declare and we decree that as we go about Father's business, that we will not faint. We will not be hungry. We will not want. We will never be in lack because we are about our Father's business. We thank you that you call us servants of the, uh, you call us your servants, according to Isaiah 61, verse 6. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servant of our God. And you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Father, we give you praise. We cannot want more. You called us and you supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. So we thank you, we honor you, we worship you, we glorify you. And, and, we, and we say thank you for loving us, thank you for, for caring for us, thank you for being right there, right there when we need you. We bless your name, God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, I know Facebook is a bit, you know, it's slanted. It's it's difficult to position it well because it's not the usual uh, camera, okay? So bear with me on Facebook today. It's a bit, you know, we're on holiday, so... It's a one man business. We're on holiday here. So it's not the usual, it's not the usual setting. Okay. So I'm I'm facing I'm facing a YouTube, but Facebook is a bit slanted. All right. I'm re I'm responding to, to the comment there on Facebook. Okay. Let us um, let us carry on. Next Sunday will be better. We, we, I will, both, both will face forward. Right now I'm facing YouTube and, and Facebook is on the side. Okay. Let's go to the book of Ezra. Let's go to the book of Ezra to continue our message of today. Okay. Ezra is right after Chronicles because it's a kind of continuation of the book of Chronicles. All right. So Ezra chapter 1. I will read from verse 1 to verse 11. That means the whole of Ezra 1. And it reads, Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a, proclam a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, 
Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the free will offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Verse 5. Then the heads of the fathers' houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with all, with all whose spirit God had moved, arose to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all those who were around them encouraged them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with precious things, besides all that was willingly offered. Verse 7, Ezra chapter 1, verse 7. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, brought them out by the hand of Mithreda, the treasurer, and counted them out to Sheshbazzar, the prince of Judah. This is the number of them. 30 gold platters, 1,000 silver platters, 29 knives. 30 gold basins, 410 silver basins of all similar kind, and 1,000 other articles. All the articles of gold and silver were 5,400. All these Sheshbazzar took with the captives who were brought from Babylon to Jerusalem. May the Lord bless his word. Father, we thank you for this word. We ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Your word says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to hate evil is understanding. Lord, right now we hate what you hate, and we choose to love what you love. And with that, we, we deem ourselves qualified to have wisdom and understanding according to your word in Jesus' name. It's not about who we are. It's about what your word says we are. On our own, we can do nothing. But your word says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if we have the fear, the reverential fear of God, that means we are qualified to receive wisdom from the Most High God. And so, Lord, we open our hearts to receive wisdom and to have a full understanding of what you want to speak to us about today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, saints. Welcome to Sunday, 9th of July, 2023. The title of our message of today is Strangers Will Build My Walls. You have to declare that from what we've heard in Isaiah and what we've just read in Ezra, you know that the Gentiles will come with gifts and you will enjoy uh, um, all the delight of the Gentiles. They shall bring, they shall, they, it, it says, uh, you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast. Why? Because you are the priest of the Mosai, you are God's chosen one, and you have chosen, you have decided to serve this God, the almighty God. So are you a king? Are you a priest of the Mosai God? 
then you are qualified to eat of the riches of Gentiles, according to Isaiah 61, verse 6. All right. So, and that's why the Bible says strangers will build our walls. Strangers, good God-chosen strangers have the right to assist and encourage us to build our walls, to do the work of God, to build out the kingdom of God, because we are all about kingdom building. But while strangers come to help us, we must not remain idle. So we have to go full on and declare, I am a king, I am a prince, I am a priest of the Most High God. Jesus was not idle. He had all his needs met. He had all the supply that he needed. Anyhow, and according to Apostle Paul, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And that's what this is all about. So, whether I am in captivity or not, from what we just read in Ezra, I have to know my identity. <laughs> the dungeon cannot make me less of the prince, less of a priest, less of a king that I am. Because whatever situation I find myself right now is only temporary. It's not the end of the story. One day I will arise and sit on my throne because this has been predetermined by heaven. You did not come here to earth on your own. Nobody is here on earth. I know a lot of people don't understand that they are on earth on a mission. But for those of us who do, and this is what we need to teach people, every one of us is here on a mission. So we want to make this clear today that we are kings and priests of the kingdom of God. We are kings and priests on heaven's mission, on kingdom mission. And we have to use every opportunity that we have that is put before us to prove that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. All right. We know of the story of Joseph. As a young man, it was revealed to him. It was predetermined. This is what I want us to get. It was predetermined that Joseph will rule over his family. The circumstances after those dreams did not look like any of this was going to happen, but he held on. His mentality did not change from being a prince because he was in prison. His mentality did not change from being who God called him to be because somebody lied against him or his brothers hated him. So what I need us to understand today that no matter where you are, it is a temporary situation. We are reading here in Ezra about the Jewish people, the, the, um, the children of Israel who were in captivity. Nebuchadnezzar had taken them to Babylon. Of course, Babylon had fallen. And so now, Babylon was split into Persia and Medes, so the Media Kingdom. And now Cyrus was the king of Persia. Nebuchadnezzar was dead. His son that messed up died, so the kingdom was split. And now Cyrus, because even though he wasn't a Jew, he, he wasn't I mean, there was no nothing like Christian. Jesus hadn't come then. He wasn't a believer in the in let's say he was a heathen, okay? A gentile. He was a gentile king. 
So Jews and Gentiles, let's just make it easy like that. He was a Gentile king. Yet, that's why I keep telling people, it's not the Bible that makes you a Christian. No. If you are not a Christian in your heart, you you you, 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 you won't even, the, you can read the Bible all you want. People are reading the Bible and they are, they are not Christian. They don't even know what the Bible is talking about. You, you have to have the heart. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and to hate evil is understanding. So once your heart is in the right place, you will start to know what others don't know. That's the whole point. So here is Cyrus. His heart was right, even though he was a Gentile king. And so this day, he declared, he says, that, let's go back to, to Ezra 1. He says, in the first year of Cyrus, in his first year, he just came on the throne. He looked around and he perceived there is something wrong here. When we go to work, when you are on the street, when you are in the shops, when you look around, do you see what is wrong? And are you able to act correctly? In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. So Jeremiah had spoken years before. He said, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a, proclama a pro <laughs> can't speak. proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. You see, that's why I'm saying God only looks at our hearts. When the heart is right, God will do anything he wants with you. We must be submitted to his will, whether you are a Jew, whether you are a Gentile. That's why there's no Jew, no Gentile in his presence. It's your heart that is looking for. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. And so he proclaimed throughout all his kingdom. And he says, thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me. So he acknowledged the Lord God of heaven, the God of the Jewish people, the Holy One of Israel. And he said that this God has commanded him. Read verse 2. The Lord God of heaven has, has given me all these kingdoms and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So he sent out this proclamation. Who is among you of all his people? He says, I'm not even part of you, but who among you who belong to him? Who, who, who is there? Who is there among the Jews? And he says, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. And it's put in bracket, he is God. So Cyrus, king of Persia, acknowledged this God to be the God. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. The God that is in Jerusalem, according to Cyrus, he knew that this God was God. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold and, and with goods and livestock, besides the free will offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. So he's calling on all the people. God has put it in my heart to build his house. I'm not a Jew. I'm the king of Persia. So I'm summoning the Jews. If you know you are God, pack your things. You've been in exile for too long. You've been in captivity for too long. Go home and build the house of your God. 
reset your steps. Don't just sit there and be comfortable in captivity. And then he summoned the people. He said, all of you neighbors of these Jewish people, help them, help them. Give them, give them silver, give them gold, because that, that's how, like monetary system, that's how they used to measure wealth. That means just give them what they need, because this is important. Let them go and do what is right. Don't be comfortable in captivity. Don't be comfortable just, you know, passing one day into another. Let your spirit be stayed. I want more. There is more. I am a child of God. This cannot be all. There has to be more. Who are the 20% that are ruling the world? Why are we comfortable being the 80%? People say, you know, 80, 20, and we just agree with it. Oh, I'm part of the 80. No, why don't you push that boundary? Even if you are not in the, in the 20 region, why don't you refuse to be in the 80 region? Push yourself to 30, push yourself to 60, push yourself. Jesus gives that allowance. Some will bear fruit. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Even if you are not 100 fold, don't, don't be comfortable where you are. Always remember, I am the child of God. I am a king and I am a priest and I am about my father's business and I must eat from the harvest. I must eat plentifully. That, read Isaiah 61. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. That's the topic of our message of today. Strangers will build your wall. The resources for you to prosper are all here on earth. God, God is not going to create anything new. He said once, let there be light, and light is still here. I need us to understand that the enemy wants to, you know, he, he doesn't even want to leave you where you are. He wants to push you down to zero. Are you happy to be where you are? Or are you willing to push further? The resources are there. If a Gentile king could see the need for the children of God to arise and go and build the house of God. What are you, the child of God, doing? You are the priest and you are the king. You are the prince, like Joseph. All the children of Israel, all the 12 sons were princes. They knew it. So Joseph, whether he was in the prison or not, whether he was a servant or not, he knew. That's my identity. I'm a prince. Are you a prince with mouth or... Have you learned to accept that as your identity? What is your mindset? What is your mindset about your situation? What is your mindset about who you are? What is your mindset about the world that you live in? We are kings and we are prince, uh, uh, priests and princes in the kingdom of our God. We cannot be idle. We must get up and be doing. We must be up and doing. The king said, "Any who, who, who is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. So you have the blessing of the king. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Jerusalem, and build the house of the Lord, the Lord God of Israel. He is God. Are you still debating religion which religion are you still sitting down and debating who you are with people who have no identity oh there are many religions oh there are many ways to god which god which god are we talking about here a gentile king says the god that dwells according to his knowledge 
that God lived in Jerusalem. He said, that God in Jerusalem, that is God. Go and build his house. Go and do something for yourself. If you belong to that God, go and do something for yourself. I came and I took you over from Babylon. But my heart tells me that this is not who you should be. This is not who you should be. And he commanded neighbors, the, all, the foreigners around you. He said, help them. Let, let them go. Let them go and do something tangible. Let them go and start some businesses. Let them go and let the place where God dwells be lively again. And he said, then the head, verse 5 of Ezra 1, then the head of the families uh, of the father's houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priest and the Levite with all whose spirit God had moved. You see, your spirit must be moved. This is not flesh and blood thing. It's not by might or power. That's why I'm saying you can read this Bible. You That doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't make you a Christian. You can go to church. That doesn't make you a Christian. Where is your heart? Where is your spirit? With all whose spirit God had moved, arose. So, isn't, see, nobody can force you to do things for God. Even God cannot force you. He, he says, this is what I want for you. you. You take it or you leave it. There are roads to go up and build the house of the Lord God, which is in Jerusalem. And all those who were around them encouraged them. Because this building can be very, very discouraging. You are trying to do what is right. Ten people around you are mocking you, laughing at you. What's Christianity? What do you think you are doing? Or why don't you just sleep? What a waste of time. Yes, it can be very, very discouraging. But God is sending strangers to build their walls. God is sending people to encourage you this morning. That's verse 6 of Ezra 1. And all those who were around them. So you, God will start to send encouragers. Can I hear amen? God will start to send people who will encourage you on your journey while you are going about father's business. All those who were around them encouraged them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with precious things besides all that was willingly offered. So they were offering, and then these people said, no, th this is not enough. For the house of God, there must be more. So they were willing, and God will send willing helpers on your on your day of need, in your day of trouble, God will send you people to encourage you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, and it says in verse 7, King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had, listen to this, had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine? Nebuchadnezzar took precious things. Who is Nebuchadnezzar? The devil. He's the devil. He took what belonged to you and hid away. Trust me, the devil doesn't need your thing. Same way God doesn't need anything from you, the devil doesn't need anything from you. The, end, the, the devil only wants to press you down. He wants to steal, kill, destroy. He, he doesn't need it. He is spirit. 
Same way God is spirit. God doesn't need anything from you. God put everything we needed here before we came. The same way God doesn't need anything from you. The devil doesn't need anything from you. All he wants is to oppress you. When Nebuchadnezzar took the, 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 the articles, read there in verse 7, from Jerusalem, what did he do with them? He stored them away in the temple of his gods. So Satan is, has stolen from you and stored away in his thinking old uh, 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 <laughs> warehouse, like uh, you can say. And that's why when, you, when people pray, you hear them say, devil, release the things you've stolen from me. Because he's, he just he, he takes them because he doesn't want you to enjoy them. These are gifts from God. You are a king, you are a priest, you are a child of God. God has bestowed all his blessing upon you. But due to sin, mistakes, forefathers, it may not even be from you. Like these people were, were in uh, uh, captivity. The young ones, because of the disobedience of their parents. So the enemy steals and stores up in his evil warehouse. He doesn't need it. He just wants to oppress you. He just wants you to suffer. So he steals from you. He takes from you and stores away in his filthy temple. But the one that God sent to help you comes and says, take, go. I'm releasing this. Remember, it was from this storehouse that the son of uh, Nebuchadnezzar went and took one cup to come and, and, uh, and do party. Or he took some of the golden cups to come and do party. That same night he died. Because these things are stored away. Your possession is stored away. The enemy cannot do anything with it. So you must say, no more. I'm taking back what is mine. I'm taking back what is mine. Here, Cyrus went and released, verse 7. King Cyrus also brought out. So you, your helpers will help you to bring out everything. God will send help in time of need. And everything that the enemy has stolen from you and stored away will be brought out in the name of Jesus. King Cyrus, that's why I... Um, Isaiah 60 that we read earlier. If you see um, verse, verse 5 of, of Isaiah 61. Let's start there. 61 verse, Isaiah 61 verse 5. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers but you shall be named the praise of God. Then if you go back to Isaiah 60, from verse 5 as well, then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. All that has been buried at the bottom of the sea, the sea will spit it out. The abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. So supply. When Apostle Paul says, the Lord, my God, will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. God is restoring your lost fortune today in the name of Jesus. And he's sending helpers. Strangers will build your wall. So here we are. King Cyrus brought out, so Ezra 1 verse 7, brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar here represents the enemy, had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. He had no use for them. This is what I need us to get. The enemy has no use of the things that God has given you. So don't let him keep them. Don't let him store them away in his filthy warehouse. You have the right to
to go and say, devil, you've kept this enough. From my forefathers, from my fathers, from my, you know, generation before me, now enough is enough. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. So verse 8, and Cyrus, king of Persia, brought them out by the hand of Mithredas, the treasurer. Who is keeping your goods? Who is keeping your treasures? They must release it. Enough is enough. And counter them out to Sheshbazza, the prince of Judah. You are the prince. You deserve your goods. You deserve your treasures. Don't let the enemy keep what is rightfully yours. It's your birthright. You are the prince. And he started listing out gold, silver, and all that. We have to know that this thing belongs to us and we are taking it back in the name of Jesus. Satan has stored away our goods long enough. We are vessels of the Most High God. God is looking for vessels to occupy. He wants to use you. He wants to use me to bombard the enemy's camp and to release the good there. Some, yeah, of course, everybody is not David who is a warrior. But if God has called you to be a warrior for your family, then be the warrior in your family. Be the warrior in your generation. Don't be preoccupied with false cares that this world is just bringing. Oh, you know, there are only 20 people on top, uh, you know, 20 out of, or, 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 you know, like they say, 20, 80. That's what I mean. 20% on top, the, the rest of the 80. Who said that? Who is that God's law? Is that God's mandate? That you should be part of the 80. Why are you why are you just happy to settle for the 80? Why are you not? What are you doing to push the boundary? So today our mandate is to push the boundary. It's one thing not to know, but this word is coming to you today so that you may know. So that you may know that it's not your portion to be to just be the 80. Tell yourself enough is enough. And say, God help me. God send me helpers. God send me people to encourage me. People who will help me. People who will provide for me. Strangers will build my wall while I will be the servant of my God. I will be that prince that I was created to be. I will not be idle in my father's house. I will go about my father's business and I will occupy until he comes, because that's my mandate. That's my mandate. And God is not sending us to do it on our own. He, and he says it in Isaiah 45, I've not, I've not asked you to serve me in vain. He's only looking for vessels. And that's why he says, whosoever will may come. Are you an available vessel? That's all. Are you an available vessel that God is going to use? Not just to help you, but to help your family and to help your generation. Or are you too preoccupied with the false case of this world? They say, rise up, do nine five. You say, yes, that's me. It's false because Satan, the ruler of this world, is a liar. God did not create 8020. God did not create 95. God did not create you into an empty world either. You were placed into an abundance before Satan came to deceive. So are you going to settle and allow Satan to keep deceiving you? Or have you heard something today and said, enough is enough. I'm taking mine back. 
I'm taking mine back. I'm taking my brothers on back. I'm taking my sisters on back. I'm taking my mothers on back. I'm taking my father. If they were ignorant, I'm not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Everything he took, he stored away. He has no use for them because he is spirit. Spirit don't need what you need here on earth. He just comes to steal, kill, destroy. So today you have to say, I'm taking it back. Let's jump to um, the so if you if you look at that um, chapter, chapter two, chapter two is the Exodus when they went back to to Jerusalem to build. Chapter 3 is the rebuilding. Chapter 4, you see a lot of jealousy and opposition because the enemy doesn't want you to take it back. The enemy comes with opposition and jealousy. You have to anticipate this. That's why you have to put on the full armor and stand your ground. Because even in chapter 5 of that Ezra, the people, even though they were afraid, they kept on working. And then, because the enemy tried to stop the work, when the next king came, King Darius, he, he issued another decree. He said, you know what? <laughs> Let these people build their, the house of their God. And you must give them. Give them enough to be able to build that, that place. My question is, you know, when, when we... When, like I just said, Satan doesn't need what you have. God doesn't need it either. So when they say supply for the need of the building of the house, people think, oh, I'm giving to God. Give, which God are you giving to? <laughs> you are building treasures for yourself. It is a transaction. God wants to see your heart. Where is your heart? That's why people remain poor and remain 80-20. I want us to wake up. When God asked Abraham to give him Isaac, did God need Isaac? I, I want our mindset to be clear. All of us, we are, we are nothing but vessels that God wants to use to display himself to this world. I say it all the time. So if God wants to display himself through you, what have you got to offer him? Here, Cyrus is saying, get ready. Go build the house of your God. If you know who you are. And even urge your neighbors, foreigners, to help you. And here you are saying, no, let me keep my silver. Let me keep my gold. When God asked Abraham, to sacrifice Isaac. Did God need Isaac? No, he did not. God only wanted to see where Abraham's heart was. Because where your heart, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If Abraham had loved Isaac more than God, that's where he would have ended. Jesus says, if you love yourself, Love your father, love your mother, love your husband, wife, your son, your daughter more than me. You are not worthy of me. If you don't put Jesus first, nothing you do works. Seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness. That's your number one. Jesus first. Kingdom first. Because it is a transaction. You are building treasures for yourself. If Abraham had kept Isaac, 
you won't have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob today. Because <laughs> that's all he would have had. He would have had Isaac. He would die. Isaac would die. And that would be it. But he chose God. Hallelujah. He chose God. Against all odds. Because he knew that this God, <laughs> I've seen him a little bit. I've seen him a tiny bit. After 25 years of him telling me, you have a son, you have a son, your children will be like the stars of the sky and the, and the sun on the seashore. And now my son is old enough to carry wood up the mountain and have the sense to discuss with me. Daddy, I see the knife, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Isaac was not a baby. Don't fool yourself. Even Isaac chose the sacrifice. And that's why God calls himself after them. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My question is, are we too self-involved? preoccupied with the false cares of this life and we have forgotten to do kingdom business we've forgotten about our true self our, about our future we are running after emptiness we don't even have the the the, the security of protection because if we don't put God first, who is going to protect all that you are running after? Because Psalm 91 says he will give his angels charge over you. But if you don't dwell in the secret place, <laughs> who is going to be in charge of you? Who is going to protect you? So as you are running after all these things, the more you run after them, the more you lose them. The more you run after them, the more you lose them. So it becomes this right rest. No beginning, no end. You don't even know what you are doing. Until one day you are too tired. And then you go. Empty. <laughs> Empty. Well, if you know enough to transact with God, that's how you'll be building treasures. Not, not just here on earth, but in heaven. Because Jesus said that to, to Peter. Peter said, we've left all and followed you. What? is in it for us. Jesus said, you know what? You can't leave all and follow me for no for, for nothing. You have riches here on earth and you have riches forever in heaven. I need us to put our minds in the right place. Whatever the enemy has taken from you due to past ignorance. Today you heard this word so that you know. Go and take it back. Slap him very much. Slap him right, left, and center. And say, I, I might have been stupid yesterday. I might have thought that I'm the one trying to help myself. I'm building my, you know, uh, uh, estate or whatever. But now I know that I am only a vessel through which God is building his kingdom. And if I allow God to use me to build his kingdom, then I must enjoy every bit of it. I must enjoy every bit of it. So Satan, give back. Remember what Jesus did to him? When he thought Jesus had died, they were, he just wanted to start to, to, to celebrate. Jesus arrived in hell. Remember, he created he the heavens, the earth, and the underworld. Jesus owns it all. Jesus is the CEO. He's the head of all principalities. Even in hell, Jesus is Lord. He went to hell. He told Satan, let go of the captives. Let go. And angels were screaming, open up. You ancient get and let the king of glory come. And here we are, ignorant. May we never be ignorant again in the name of Jesus. 
as a man thinks, so is he. So we must change our mindset to thinking right. We must change our mindset. Everything we do for God is a divine transaction. Do not be deceived that you are giving anything to God. No, God put them here for you. He wants to see where is your heart. Abraham, give me Isaac. I want to see whether you love Isaac more than me. I gave you Isaac at the age that you had already given up. So all that thing that you have now, you think you, you work for it? <laughs> you think you work for it? Think again. Because tomorrow, tomorrow you may not have the breath to, to go to that work again. God forbid that we should think that we work for anything we have. Ask God for wisdom right now. Say, Lord, I don't want to be bound in ignorance. I don't want to live in captivity. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Anyone who tries to mess with me, let it end today. Let it end today. Think like Abraham. Do a transaction with God. Do not be Satan's victim anymore. Don't let Satan stop you. Don't let Satan deceive you. Everything Satan does is deception. He's playing with your mind. Change how you think. If you think poor, if you say, if you think, oh, I'm poor, oh, I don't have enough, you will never have enough. I don't care how hard you work. If you think lack, you will always lack. Why? Because millionaires still kill themselves because they think they don't have enough. Look around you. I know it's Satan who is tormenting them. That's why I'm saying it is deception. We all have enough because God sent us into an abundant world. Ask him, God, open my eyes to see where my own is. We all have enough. Nobody has to cheat another person to have anything. It's mindset. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I cannot want of anything good. I cannot lack. I cannot be poor. If my father owns it all, how can I be poor? Jesus says, God, my father gave me a kingdom and I bestow the same kingdom to you. So we are kings and priests. So you have to think, I am here in this world after my father's business i'm representing heaven here on earth and i will enjoy the abundance that god had put here for me i don't have to cheat anybody to have anything no my own is my own and satan if you took some yesterday i'm taking it back today look at the jewish people as as tiny as they are the whole world is still fighting them why? Because they have something. What, what did we read in Isaiah 60? Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord is, is risen upon you. So people, the, the Jewish people are as small, as small a community as they are. They are still the richest. Why? Is it because they are more clever than you? No. It's the glory of God. It's the glory of God. No matter what you do to them, they still, they still, they keep growing. Pharaoh tried it in Egypt, and the more he suppressed them, the more they were multiplying. It is supernatural. That's why I'm saying whatever you do to God today, learn it. It is a divine transaction. Put yourself in business with God and see what he does with you. Let your business be with God. Let your transactions be with God Almighty. And then you start seeing what he will do in your life. Let, let people suffer, those who want to suffer. Let them run, run, helter skelter, nine, five, all they like. But you have to decide from today. Okay, enough is enough. 
I've done, I've not, I've done enough of that nonsense. I'm not going to do it again. It's a decision. That's why I'm saying it's a mindset. If you allow Satan to deceive you, he will continue to deceive you. If you think the world system is what you need, then that's what you get. Let's go to Ezra chapter six. I know we don't have time. This 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 Ezra story is a re, is really a Bible study topic. It's not it's not a Sunday morning thing. Go go and read go and read the whole. It's not a long chapter. Go and read it for yourself. It's not a, a big book. Ezra chapter six. Let us read from verse from verse nine. Ezra 6 from verse, no, not verse 9. Um, let me start from verse. Let, let, let's just start from verse 1. Let me teach a little bit on it. Like I say, it's a vast topic. So Ezra chapter 6 from verse 1. Then King Darius, like I said, um, um, Chapter 1 is when Cyrus comes and releases uh, the children of Israel. Chapter 2 is the Exodus. They start to go back to Jerusalem. Chapter 3 is when they go back and start rebuilding. Chapter 4, the enemy comes with jealousy, opposition, and all that. Chapter 5, even under the opposition, they kept building. Don't let the enemy stop you. Then here is chapter six. I want, I want to, I want you to see uh, under another king, because when you are diligent, God will send help. Okay, so let's do chapter six now. Chapter six. Then King Darius, you see, King Darius issued a decree because the enemy of the Jews had gone to stop them. They sent uh, a report. Oh, these people. The, if you know they are building these high walls, they won't pay tax anymore and all that. You'll be losing, King. You'll be losing. So for, for a moment, the world didn't go on as, as it should have done. But then they, because they determined to build a house of their God, they sent back word to Darius. So now Darius went back to the archives and saw that King Cyrus had made a decree before. And this is his response. Then King Darius, so Ezra chapter 6, I'm reading now. King Darius issued a decree. Kings make decrees to know who you are. Start to decree into your life. King Darius issued a decree and a search was made in the archives. Release those angels to go <laughs> and find what was written concerning you. Where you cannot reach, angels can reach. So release them. Read um, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Release those ministering spirits. Let them go and cause things that you cannot reach to happen. They are there for you and I. So there's too much. There's too much in this, in this topic today. King Darius issued a decree and a search was made in the archives. Where the treasure, where the treasures were stored in Babylon, your treasures are stored away for no reason. You need them for the service of your God, for building and rebuilding the house of your God, for you to live well. Because when you are a servant of God, you have to enjoy the harvest. It's your right as a prince, as a priest, as a king in the kingdom of your father. It's your right to enjoy life as long as you are not idle. You go about father's business, you must enjoy from father's vineyard. So listen. King Darius issued a decree and a search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon. And at Akmeta in the palace, that is in the province of Media, 
a scroll was found, something will be found in your favor. Something that was hidden away, that was taken away from your great, 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 great grandfather, grandmother. Release the angels to go and find them. It is your right to eat of that treasure today. The same way Satan has caused you to suffer something that your forefathers did. Let him also release their treasure. You, have, you also have to eat from what your forefathers did. You have to enjoy it. It's, you, it's your right. So, a scroll was found, and in it a record was written thus. In the first year of King Cyrus, so Ezra chapter 6 verse 3. In the first year of King Cyrus, King, uh, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations of it be firmly laid. Its height, listen to this. Its height, 60 cubits, and its width, 60 cubits, as, as tall as well as wide, with three rows of heavy stones and one row of new timber. Listen to the next sentence. Let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury. If you are a king, a prince, a priest in the house of your God, trust me, your God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You just make yourself an available vessel that your king will use. <laughs> That's the only way to eat from this vineyard. The expenses will be paid from the king's treasury. God didn't ask you to go and do it on your own. He says, I'll pay for it. I ordered it, I'll pay for it. Verse 5. Also, let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar, the enemy, think back, took from the temple, which is in Jerusalem, and brought to Babylon, be, rest be restored. As for your restoration today, people, I'm telling you, this message is not for one day. Mm -mm -mm. I'll, I'll take verse 5 again. Ezra chapter 6 verse 5. Let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple, which is in Jerusalem, and brought to Babylon, be restored and taken back to the temple which is in Jerusalem, each to its place, and deposit them in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tatanai, governor of the region beyond the river, and Sheta, uh, Sheta Bosnai, and your companions, the Persians, who are beyond the river, keep yourselves far from there. I don't know if anybody caught that. These people beyond the river had, they were the opposers, they were the ones who fought against the rebuilding. The end of that verse 4 says, keep yourselves far from there. Tell Satan, keep your hands off my treasures. You have to be bold. Satan, keep your hands off what is mine. Then, 
the king made a decree. Let this, he, he told the enemy, keep yourselves far, far from there. Don't ever disturb these people again. Keep yourselves far from these people. Do you know your worth? Do you know your authority over the enemy? Tell him today, restore what you've stolen and stay far away from me if you, if you know yourself. Stay away, Satan. Get your hands off what is mine. Get your hands off my children. Get your hands off my job. Get your hands off my business. Get your hands off my ministry. Satan, stay far away from me. Give me back all that you've stolen and keep your filthy self far from me. It's the word of God. Read it for yourself. See, when we don't know, Satan comes, he lies, and we believe it. Oh, you can only be this much. You can only go this far. And we say, well, that's what my father was. That was that's what my mother was. So, yeah, I'm, I'm even, uh, to be frank, I'm actually a little bit better. So I can just be happy to stay. It's a lie. You are a king. You are a prince. You are a priest. You deserve 100%. Jesus, Jesus gives the allowance, some 30, some 60, some 100. The world is giving you 80, 20. Sen, shall we wake up? Shall we be bold against the enemy? Take back everything he has stored away in his filthy warehouse. He doesn't need it. He just, he's just doing it to oppress you. Spirits don't need what humans need. God put everything in this world for you and I. He doesn't need it. He wants to see where is your heart. When they say give to the building of the house of God. He wants to see what are you doing. Because the measure that you met out is the measure that we will be meted back to you. Luke chapter, chapter 6 verse 38. I need us to wake up. I need us to wake up. It might look, you know, difficult. But don't, don't let fear cripple you. Fear of the unknown is keeping people bound. Even in your fear, start to praise God. Decide it, determine it, that you can never be in want, you can never be in lack, because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to your daddy. And you have the right to take any and kill and eat at any time. Remember the brother of the prodigal son? When the prodigal son was gone, the father's heart was pumping. Oh, when will my son be back? When will my son be back? He was watching out. God is always watching out for you. The day the son came back, he saw him from afar. He ran to him, hugged him, kissed him, brought him home. Commanded his servant, change him, bath him, you know, throw a party. The older brother came, he, listening or uh, hearing the sound of the party. Because when heaven, when heaven throws a party for you, it's loud. There's food for everyone. That's what God wants for you. But the older brother came and started accusing his father. Oh, I've been working so hard. You were working for yourself. You were, you were not doing father's business. Because when you work in father's business, you are free to eat. I've been working so hard for you. You never killed any, even a little goat for me. But this your prodigal son took your money and left and came back and you had thrown, thrown party for him. Father is like, whoa, 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 what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? You are in the house. I've 
laid a table before you even in the presence of your enemies. What's your complaint? Take any goat, kill and eat as you like. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. God doesn't need it. It's mindset. If you want to work hard for nothing, work hard for nothing. That means you are serving the king of this world, which is Satan. But if you've made up your mind to serve the king, the God of Israel, then you can eat all you want. Nobody will beat your finger. Even in the presence of your enemies, tell them, watch me eat. Because in my father's house, there's party every day. Mindset. Here, the devil was told, keep yourselves far from them. He can watch you all he likes. He cannot touch you. Because you know who you are. God has put angels all around you. <laughs> Before he, he lifts his finger. Remember what Jesus said? I know we read and we forget. Jesus rejoiced. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. The moment he conceived in his heart to walk evil against God. God is like, what's this? Something that I created? Walking against me? You don't even exist. Out! Split second. And here you are fearful of some, something that God cast out. Your daddy cast out and you're still afraid of him. They tell him, keep your crooked fingers far from me. I'm eating from my daddy's table because I work for it. I work for this and I will enjoy it. I don't care what you think, said that. We need to know, we need to know. Make up your mind, decide it. Tell yourself, I can never have a poverty mindset. I can never lack because as a man thinks, so is he, according to Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs chapter 23. As you think, that's a, it's mindset. Jesus says in uh, Matthew 19, 26, with men, this is impossible. You cannot do it on your own strength. But with God, all things. All means all. He didn't say some things. So it depends on how far you want to take yourself. The, the brother of the prodigal son thought he was working <laughs> for peanuts. And that's all he, he got because that's, that's the level of his mind. That was the level of his mind. And he even had the audacity to come and accuse the dad. The dad is like, what are you talking about? Son, son, all that I have is yours. What's your trouble? If you want to throw a party for your friends, take whatever animal you want and throw a party for your friends. What are you asking me? It's yours. Just be diligent. Manage it well. Ask for wisdom. The wisdom to govern. The wisdom to occupy. The wisdom to manage it well. Because this is kingdom. You will bring the report. All you need is the wisdom and the right heart. Because when you have the right heart, the Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom too. People who don't know this thing, they talk nonsense. And you listen to them. Do it with God, not with man. See, with man, this thing I'm talking about is difficult, but not with God. God didn't send you into this world to do anything by yourself on your own. Do it with God. Whether it is your health, do it with God. Whether it is your finances, do it with God. Any physical, any spiritual need, do it with God. 
Never with man. Man will fail you. You are nine five will fail you. Let Jesus go in front of you to that job. Let Jesus be with you and let Jesus watch your back. Give him all the glory. Let him be your king all around. In your health, in your finance, in your business, in your whatever you do. All human beings are looking for answers. So why are you going to another human being who is looking for answers? For answers. Are they all knowing? They need answers. I need answers. They need answers. So why do I go to them for answers? Here, Jesus is your answer. The word of God is your answer. Nobody else has any answer for you. So whatever you think the any enemy has stolen from you, take it back. Take it back. Don't, don't accept no for an answer. Tell him, you stole from my forefathers. I've drawn the line with the blood of Jesus. You are not entering here. And I'm taking all that you stole from my forefathers into my own territory and I'm shutting you out. I'm shutting you out. Let's, let's continue reading that Ezra 6 for a bit. Verse 7. Let the work of this house of God alone. <laughs> That's what you are telling the enemy. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God on its site. Don't come and change the boundaries. Don't come and change the rules. And King Darius says, moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews. Now, listen to what you are in. When I say strangers will build your walls. I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from the taxes on the region beyond the river. He says, you you pay them. <laughs> you give them all that they need. The expenses and the tax from the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men so that they are not hindered. Don't hinder the work of my God if you don't want the sword on your back. Read it for yourself. Whatever they need, verse 9, young bulls, rams, lambs, or the burn, burnt offering of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, oil, according to the request, according to the request of the priest. <laughs> Whatever they ask, give it to them. According to the request of the priest, who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. I don't know if somebody is thundering amen. Your enemy, <laughs> oh, it's payback time. That they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to the God of heaven, and pray for the life of the king and his son. You see, the king knew when these priests are satisfied, then I'm covered. My back is covered. My, my children are covered because they are praying for me. They are praying for my children. Why do we think we have the, the altar of prayer on Thursday nights? We pray for those. God says to, the, to Abraham, those who bless you will be blessed. Read it on. You say, see, the king knew. He said, and pray for the life of the king and his sons. So when you do for God, you are doing it for yourself. You are covered. The king knew it. I have to support these people so that it will be well with me. Verse 11, also I issue a decree that whoever alters, listen, oh, 
The devil is in trouble right now. Whoever alters this edict, let a timber be pulled from his house and erected. And let him be hanged on it. And let his house be made a refuse heap because of this. Whoever will oppose the will of God in your life. Like um, Haman and his sons. <laughs> Haman was opposing uh, uh, the, the Jewish people in the, in the time of Esther and Mordecai. He tried to, to build the gallows for, for Mordecai. Who hung on it at the end? Him and his sons all got annihilated because he dared to oppose the, the hand of God on the lives of God's people. Whoever, read what a human king ordered here. Also, he said, as if it's not enough that I'm ordering them to supply all your needs, also I decree that whoever tries, you, you know, when King Cyrus did it before, you guys tried to, to alter it. This time, Whoever tries to alter this thing that I, King Darius, is writing. Let a timber be pulled from his own house and let that timber be erected and let him be hanged on it and let his house be made a refuse heap because of this. And may the God who causes his name to dwell there destroy any king any king or people who put their hand to alter it or to destroy this house of God, which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, issue a decree. Let it be done diligently. <laughs> the enemy is in trouble. You have to know who you are. Who are you in Christ Jesus? Are you his king? Are you his priest? Then settle back. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. Because the enemy will suffer. They might have opposed your papa and mama. Tell him, get your hands off. Get your hands off me. Enough is enough. This is my generation. This is my time. This is my season. No more captivity. I take my freedom back. I take all my goods back from generations. This is my turn. Shall we pray in tongues? Shall we just pray these things in? I'm not giving any prayer point. I've spoken enough. Just pray in tongues so that your mind will not even interfere. Let God be the judge today. Let the decree of heaven go out on your behalf right now. Marco Asarata. Eskalama Santum Ziba Ariga Roda Azakata Chelela Kaya Chelela Kai Chelela Kai Chelela Kai Kandarigo Sandara Mashe Sandara Mashe Sandara Mashe Ariga 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 Roda Azakata Zakata 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 Asamare Mako Asarata Mama bo azakata ziba 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 ariga roda zakata chelela kai chelela kai chelela kai mako sarata. The decree has gone out. The proclamations have gone out. Father, we say amen. We say amen to everything you decreed and proclaimed over us today. The king's decree has gone out. Your word is always yes and amen for us. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your plans for us. Thank you that everything that the enemy thought he took from us and stole from us and stored away, that we have every right, every power, every authority to take them back and to live in your house all the days of our lives to behold your beauty, to, uh, to inquire in your temple, to eat from, from your temple, to eat the harvest of our labor. 
we shall never labor in vain. Father, we thank you that all that you have belong to us. We don't have to look right or left. We don't have to run after anything. We stay in Father's house. We go about Father's business and everything we need is completely taken care of. Strangers will build our walls. People will bring goods. People will bring offering. People will, will just supply our needs according to the king's decree. And so it shall be as we occupy until our King Jesus comes back. Thank you, Father, for the authority. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you have for us. Glory, honor, adoration be to you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, saints. Communion time, communion time, communion time. I hope you all have your elements ready. The word of God is wonderful. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is nourishing. The word of God is peace. It settles your soul. It gives power to the weak. The word of God is life. Jesus is the word I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so we bring our gifts before you. We say, blessed are you, Lord God of heaven and earth. In your goodness, we bring these gifts to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, let these, whatever element we have, let them become health to our minds and body. Let it be health in every way. Let it bring us good because it's from you. You give seed to the sower, you give bread to the eater. And we receive it. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we declare that these elements are sanctified, made holy, to become the very body and the blood of our Lord, our King, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so, after Jesus had given thanks, he took the bread. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And so he gave them and they ate. In like manner, at the end of the supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise and gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for all men, for all men. Let us pray for all men to come to the knowledge of Christ. Jesus died for them. Religion they cannot save any human being. Jesus saves and he shed his blood for the remission of sin. None of us can wash our sins away, only the blood of Jesus. He said, drink. This is my blood which will be shed for you and for all men for the remission of sin. And we believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you, according to John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever 
believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. We say thank you, God the Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming for us. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are here teaching us all these things, reminding us, revealing this truth to us. We bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us eat of the body of Christ. Amen. Let us drink of his most precious blood. Let our hearts be joyful. Let our heart be joyful because in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right and our pleasures forevermore. He has beaten the enemy hands down once and for all. We just need to step into that victory. He is the conqueror and we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Father, we shout hallelujah to your Mussolini. We shout hosanna to your Mussolini. Glory be to you. Glory be to the Holy One of Israel. Thank you that you, you planned all this before the foundation of the world. Thank you that it pleased you to reveal this to us in our days. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you agreed to come to save mankind. God Almighty, choosing to be man for man. Thank you for doing this for us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, saints. We are about at the end. Remember, today and tomorrow, we are still on holiday. So anybody waiting for any responses has to wait till Tuesday. The holiday doesn't end today, it ends tomorrow. All right? 10th of July. So business as usual again from the 11th Tuesday. All right, remember that. Um, yeah, I just want you to go away and, and rejoice because of this message of today. God has determined for you to succeed. Do not listen to the deception of this world to the lies of Satan, believe what God says about you. Bind Satan, banish Satan, and tell yourself, I will no longer be conformed to the things of this world, to the way the world thinks. I will be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I know who I am. I know my identity in Christ. And I stand upon that revelation. I stand on that revelation. I stand on that rock. I know who I am. I belong to Jesus. And I will excel because of him. I will thrive because of him. I will succeed because of him. Not because of my hard work. Not because of my strength, I might not because I went to school or have hundreds of certificates, and none, none of that, none of that. Because of Jesus, 
because his spirit lives in me. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Shall we remember that? And shall we keep that? Remember Tuesday, Bible study starts again. 6 p.m. for the youth, 7 p.m. for everyone. So Wednesday and Friday as well, Bible study for all. Thursday night, 9 p.m. is the altar of supplication. These are the kind of things you bring before God and say, Lord, I'm praying in my destiny. I might have been ignorant yesterday, not this time. So you bring, you go and set that altar on fire and say, Satan, it's me and you. Out, out, leave my children alone, leave my business alone, leave my job, alone. leave my life, get out of my territory. So be ready to set fire on that. <laughs> On that fire altar on Thursday. And then Friday night is also fire hour of prayer. Where we come to be sanctified. Come to be empowered. Come that the power of God will infuse us. So that we receive wisdom from above. Strength from above. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are not acting in human power. We are are infused we are weaponized by heaven we are empowered by heaven to succeed in any field any field in life anything we do we succeed because of jesus we don't succeed because we went to school we don't succeed because we have certificate we succeed because of jesus why because when we succeed god gets the glory and trust me he loves his glory when we succeed, he is glorified. So he wants us to succeed. So anything that tells you otherwise is lying. You must succeed. Tell the devil out. Okay? All right, saints. Um, I think that's it from me today. i give you a few minutes back as well today. Right? The Lord bless you and keep you. May he empower you. May he give you wisdom. Go back and read that book of Ezra. Know your identity. You might have been in captivity all these years, but now is the time to step over and to declare enough is enough. You are a king. You are a priest. So walk in daddy's vineyard and eat from the vineyard. It is automatic. It's not by hard work. It is by diligence. It is by, by, by uh, wisdom. You ask God, empower me to succeed. God, empower me to succeed. Others can have certificates. I don't care. I don't need their own. Give me my own. You see, in this world, we don't have to push each other. We all have everything we need. Because my, my father didn't send me into this world to rub shoulders with another person. No, everything I need was here before I came. All right? We don't need to cheat to succeed. We just need to look to Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added, added, added unto you. With men, this sounds impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So just agree with that all things are possible. Amen? Amen. I love you and leave you. The blood of Jesus is your refuge. The light of the Holy Spirit is your shield and the love of the Father is a blazing firewall of protection around you. Now and forever, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Mwah! Love you. Jesus loves you more. Bye for now. See you on Tuesday.